Today I'm going to show you how to repair a compressor that can't build up pressure. This is a Harbor Freight Central Pneumatic Pancake Compressor. It's item number 95275. Numbers might be different on them, but they, they're all the same. I had this compressor for a little over six years, and I use it on a regular basis, usually just for filling up tires. It works great for small nail guns, pneumatic tools, or a no-go with this, but for pumping up tires when you're out in the field, rather than rolling out the big compressor, taking tires off and bring them into the garage, when I have something like this, this little compressor comes in handy. I also keep this in my trailer when I'm picking up lawn tractors. It's small. If I go to a play, if I go to a home that has a tractor with a flat tire, this usually does the job. So well, let's get started. This is going to be a little noisy. The most this will go up to is about 25, almost 30 pounds of pressure. It was working fine and then it just stopped. Now the obvious things before you get into it that you want to check, you want to make sure this relief valve isn't leaking, you want to make sure your connectors aren't leaking, and if you never drained it before, there's a drain in the back to let the moisture out, you want to make sure this isn't leaking. I did all that already, none of these are leaking, it just won't build up the pressure. So I'm going to unplug this, I'm going to take out these, let's see, one, two, there's a screw, looks like four screws over here, one, two, three, four, and they're all Phillips. I'm going to take this off and show you what I find. If you do this at home, they give a warning right here, to prevent serious injury and explosion, do not remove this cover or adjust internal components. So if you decide to do this, totally at your own risk. Now to take this cover off, there were these four screws in the corner, plus you had to pull the handle off. Okay, so now we got it off, and what I see in here, I don't want to lose these screws, two I took out and two are still in, but I notice over here, I thought maybe this line somehow may have cracked. But see this rust? In this compressor, it does build up moisture. I'm wondering why it's rusty over here. Why is it rusty right in here and nowhere else? I'm wondering if it's blowing past this. I'm gonna put a wrench on here and see if I can snug this a little bit before I take it all apart. And that looks like the only other place it could be leaking in here. Maybe down in here, you have these joints. This thing is noisy, it vibrates a lot. And if it wasn't snugged at the factory, it could have loosened up. Like I said, I had it a little over six years and it does get used. So I'm gonna snug this up, I'm gonna turn it on and see if the pressure builds up. Well, that was quick, I found the problem. It wasn't over here, it was down here. This pipe snapped at the joint. So I don't know what I could use to replace this with. This is aluminum. Let's see what kind of, if it's just a flare fitting on here. Let's see how they have this together. It's a compressing fitting. Hmm. This is like something you would have uh, in a bathroom sink. It's compressing fit, compression fitting. The way it works is you slide the, the nut up, you get this ferrule, slide it up onto the tube, and when you tighten this nut, this ferrule is supposed to fit right in here, which it did, and it just mashes out as you tighten it down. Problem is, the tube snapped. Now, why this tube snapped, let's see, let's turn this on. 
and just see what kind of vibration goes on in here. Gotta plug this back in. Give me a minute here. Put this camera down. I'm just turning this on to see if this vibrates that much where this, this should have snapped. Well, you can see when I was holding that screwdriver on here, the way that screwdriver was bouncing. Not so much over the piston, but down over here. I'm going to see if I can find a ferrule that will fit on this. So what I'm going to do, I believe I might have enough pipe here. I don't know if I could rig this down into that or not. But I'm going to see if I have uh, my plumbing supply. If I have one in there. If not, one of the uh, hardware stores should have it. I'll show you whether this works when I get that piece. Okay, I went to uh, Home Depot today and I was able to pick up these brass sleeves. This is in the uh, plumbing department and this is a inexpensive fix. Let's see, we have these sleeves were $1.85 for the three of them. Now I thought I had uh, sle extra sleeves laying around, but I didn't. Now this tubing over here if this tubing is cracked or there's just not enough to reach from one point to the other, I believe you could use brake line for this. And if not, I checked at Home Depot. They have a roll, although you won't need a whole roll of a quarter inch, that'll, that you can substitute for this. And that's like $8.95. It's a whole roll that you have to get. They don't have short pieces. Now let's get into this repair. <coughs> Okay, this is where this has to go on to. And we're covering it. Try to get my fingers out of the way here. Good. Johnny's monitoring the camera for me. How we look, John? We okay? Yeah. You can see it? Alright. Give that a snug. I'm gonna do this without any Teflon tape. If I'm leaking air, I'm gonna put the Teflon tape on. Normally with pneumatic tools, you wouldn't use Teflon tape. But if it leaks, that's the direction we're going. This is the old part. I'm not even making it snug. I'm just putting it on so I can line it up. Here's the other nut. You want to put the nut on first, then the fitting. Right, let's get one of these out. Now I may or may not have to change this on the other side. I don't know if it's going to snug down enough. Again, make sure you put that nut on first. This is soft aluminum, so I'm able to bend it to get it into the other port. Let me show you what I have here. This is the side that wasn't broken. And I just bent this out a little bit to get it into this other fitting down. Down in here. Pushing that in. Oh, John, come here. Okay, Johnny's holding that camera for me. Okay, could you see this part down here? Yes. Okay. I have to be careful bending this. It bends easy, but it looks like it might snap easy also. Come over here. Okay, you want to get this in there. As far down as you can get it. Slide that down. Now, you can see this. Let me get this down. Okay. These threads are fine threads. So this has to be perfectly lined. Otherwise, this won't screw on. And if you do get it on there, it'll probably leak if it's not on properly. Okay, now. A little better. I know my hands are in the way right now. All I'm doing is trying to get this pipe as straight as possible into this. There we go. Got that, John? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know 
know if that's straight enough. Let's see. No, the nut's slightly cocked. I don't know if the camera could pick it up. It's just off, just that little bit. Just enough that counts. I'll try it again. Make sure that's still there. <clears throat> this is just off just a little bit. And there goes that brass fitting. Okay, watch out. I got it, Grandpa. You can get it? Mm-hmm. Want me to go get a pencil to get it? Is this in this? Because if you do this one. When we get this all together, we get remind me to get that out of there, otherwise that'll rattle. This thing makes enough noise. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me see here. That's still not right. What we're dealing with is that this is a different length of what it was. Like I said, it bends easy. Also, another thing that might fit on here, I believe you could use brake line, car brake line. Could fit this. Okay, I got it now. Okay. Let's see. Get a close look at that. Yep, yeah, it's straight. This is real easy to cross thread, so you gotta be careful. <clears throat> One second. So, now I got it. Let's tighten it up now. Okay, this is snug up here. And this we have a few more turns. By the way, this is 15. This nut requires a 15 30 second wrench. And as this nut's tightening down, it's compressing that little ring. And if I do this right, it shouldn't leak. There we go. Before I put this all together, we're going to turn it on and see if it works. Okay, John, plug this in for me. Grandpa, yeah. the, the thing thing. What? The what? copper thing. Yeah, okay, yeah, we gotta, yeah, we're not putting it together. Plugs right there. Okay, we connected? All right, let's see. Now this gauge is reading almost 20 pounds of pressure, so this gauge happens to be off. It is starting to climb. I'm opening this up. We jumped up about 20 pounds. And again, here's the piece that fits that tubing. I'm jumping ahead a little on this video, just so you don't have to wait 10 minutes to watch it fill. Johnny gives me the okay over here. Okay, well it works. Now this gauge went past 100 pounds. It says 100, it's reading 110. But I noticed when there wasn't any air in here, it was reading close to 20 pounds. So this gauge is off somewhat. But it does work. And the pressure, let's see if this pressure drops. If the pressure drops, it means I have a leak. Now another way you could check this leak, just like you would with gas, you could get soapy water and put it over here. But remember you have an electric motor. You don't want to get water into that. But so far, it's holding. Any of you who have this compressor already know that it's noisy and it does take time to charge up. That's nothing new with this. But it is compact, it's convenient when you're working in the field. If you have to throw it in the truck, you can't beat it for the price. There are better units out there that fill up a little quicker, maybe a little quieter. But for, like I said, for what I use it for, six years of use and under $2 worth of parts, I got a compressor back. 
this actually could go into my trash or treasure series and for those of you that aren't familiar with that that's a fairly new series that i started on my channel i have a series of videos in there of uh, mowers that i pick up tools i pick up and the title of it is trash or treasure if you're interested in some repairs like that i don't have that many videos on it yet but the link is right up above if you like to see uh, that series all that's left is putting these six screws back in and i'm good to go so for now this is a wrap if you enjoyed this video found it useful let me know by posting your comments down below if you have any questions give it a like and if you haven't done so already subscribe hit that joe z button up above here to subscribe to the channel and not to miss any of my videos as i upload them ring that bell icon until next time everyone stay safe